Hello. Good morning, Natalie. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing today, Liz? I am awesome. I'm excited to be here with you. Absolutely. How is life over there on the East Coast now? Oh, it's going. It's a little bit of an adjustment, um, considering moving straight from the West back over to the East, um, just getting reacclimated with everything. Uh, weather is different. Um, it's hot in Arizona, and it's a little chilly out here in comparison. <laughs> Awesome. I'm glad you're getting settled and I'm excited to do this with you. I love doing classes with you, so it'll be fun to get to do the live today. Awesome. And welcome insiders, welcome veterans, anybody else who's coming to get some information. We're excited to see you. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for spending your time with us. Absolutely. Happy Wednesday. We're halfway through the week and then we'll be on to the weekend where we can enjoy and relax and, uh, you know, hopefully move forward with some more positivity. Absolutely. Hey, if you're joining us, we'll give it a few minutes, but if you come in and join us, go ahead and pop in on the comments. Let us know where you're coming from, the branch and years you served. And if you are a VACI client, let us know who your coach is. We'll give them a shout out to you or razz them, you know, comes with the territory. Bunch of veterans get together. We like to razz each other a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, Natalie, tell me a little bit about your background. Yeah, so um, I did four years in the Navy uh, as a communications officer and um, got out in 2015. Uh, when I got out of the service, I knew that I wanted to work with veterans. And so I found any and every job that I could to do that. So I worked with helping vets find, um, find jobs specifically uh, as a recruiter. Um, and also as a headhunter. And then somehow I landed this job. Now, when it comes to my own experience as uh, someone working through the claims process, it wasn't easy, like many of the folks that are going to be joining on this call. Um, it took about eight years to get to my 100%. Um, and I was a client here first, uh, before I um, started working here at VA Claims Insider. And that's really what gave me that push over from 90 to 100. Um, but the process was long and arduous. But um, if you stick with it, I realized that it's definitely, it's worth it. Absolutely. It is. I'm super thank happy you to be here. here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. What about so, you, Coach Liz? A little bit about me. I joined the military when I was 17. Um, started out as communication specialist as well. And then I transitioned to logistics and spent the last decade of my career in recruiting. Uh, that's where they send us to die, so to speak. Uh, no teasing. It was a great, great uh, opportunity. And I learned a lot. And actually the connections that I made in recruiting helped me to find this uh, position when I came off of active duty and retired. So I'm blessed. I love that I get to work with veterans every day too. This is such a, a pleasure for me to get to <clears throat> hang out with veterans um, and, and do that for a living. It's, it's awesome. We get to help change lives and be a part of that. And it is a horrible, daunting process. I went through it for myself. And um, every veteran that, that we talk to uh, has their own struggles with it. Um, and, and that's why we exist. So we're happy to be here and happy to assist you through this process. Um, these, these live classes are pretty cool because we get to give information out to the masses, and that's a lot of fun. So let's check out some of the people in the chat real quick before we get started. Um, Matt Schmidt, hello. Janae Marr from San Diego. She's a Navy vet too, Natalie. Awesome. Welcome. We Don Lombard. U.S. Marine Corps, Camp Lejeune vet. Thank you. Welcome. Rob from Tennessee, veterans advocate, veteran, president of Veterans in Focus. That sounds awesome. Thanks, Rob, for joining us. Kathy, our husband Mike was in the Army, and they're in Alaska. I love Alaska. It's beautiful. Michael Taylor, Army veteran. Thank you. Hello. Vanessa Collins, hello. 
All right. If I didn't see you, it's because we've got a lot of comments coming in. So please don't feel slighted. You can keep posting in there. And we will um, go ahead and get started. Natalie, would you tell us a little bit about VA Claims Insiders Elite Program? Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we get started, I want to um, touch on that disclaimer one more time. Um, so we are not accredited agents, VSOs, attorneys, or any other entity recognized by the Department of Veterans Affairs, and we are not affiliated with the VA in any way. VA Claims Insider is an education-based coaching consulting company for disabled veterans exploring eligibility for increased VA disability benefits and who wish to learn more about that process. VA Claims Insider also connects veterans with vetted independent medical professionals in our referral network for medical examinations and independent medical opinions, also known as IMOs, for a wide range of disability conditions. Great. And now that we are, we've got that out of the way, um, we're going to talk about what is the ELITE program. So um, the ELITE program is a service that we provide to you as coaches um, where you have access to these Facebook Lives, of course, but you also have access to live classes um, that we host throughout the week, um, multiple live classes per day um, to start off with Coffee with the Coaches, which is just a great way to um, commune with other veterans going through the same process and start the day off positively. Um, you also receive a coach, obviously, well, someone like myself or like Liz, um, who is actually a senior coach here. Um, you'll start the day off with us or start off that process with uh, getting a strategy session. And, you know, we focus on strategy, education and medical evidence. So we're really coming together, bringing all those pieces together to help come up with a formalized plan to help you win your claim. Um, and that is a huge part of the process is really working with your coach and getting that one on one with them. We also help with uh, claim submissions. So like we said, we're not VSOs, um, so we don't fill anything out for you, but we can walk and talk you through that process and make sure that you have all the resources to uh, be able to actually submit a claim. All right. Um, so just breaking down, um, we also do have CMP preparation classes. Uh, so when it does get down to that time where you're going to uh, have that CMP or compensation and pension exam with the VA, we have classes set aside for you. And you can also request one-on-one uh, -on -one with your coach to prep for your class. All right. And then to break down what uh, to break down those uh, the live classes that we have, we have uh, three times a day where we'll have uh, live Zoom classes. Um, and again, coffee with the coaches, uh, the claims subs and uh, submissions and CMP prep. And then we also have specialty classes, um, which focus on HLR, which is a higher level review, sleep apnea, um, high value claims and much more. If you'd like to learn more about the, about VA Claims Insider, or you'd like to um, have a free discovery call, you can talk to one of our team members and um, by going to vaclaims.help. And we've got the link posted up below, so check that out. All right. Thank you, Natalie, for covering that. We are going to talk about the PAC Act today. And the PAC Act is Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson honoring our promise to address comprehensive toxics act of 2022 that is a mouthful um hopefully today we can break that down uh there is a blog post that the link is posted for you can go there and kind of follow along it's more detailed than we're going to get into on our live but it's great information so check that out on the agenda today we're going to cover what is the pack act what does it mean uh who are the exposed the toxic exposed veterans what does presumptive mean? Then we'll cover what the burn pit presumptives are. We'll, call, we'll talk about service areas that qualify for the toxic ex exposure presumptions, effective dates for those presumptives. Then we'll get into a little bit of the Agent Orange presumptive service connection and the registries, how to register for the Agent Orange um, health exam, how to register for a bur the burn pit registry we'll get kind of going on that. And before we get started, we are not going to monitor the comments until after we get through the informational part of the presentation. We will have time for questions afterward and we'll take those. So thank you for your patience and buckle up. Let's get rolling. 
Okay, so the PAC Act of 2022 is a law designed to care for our veterans exposed to toxic substances during their military service. This law provides expanded health and disability benefits for veterans and their families, and it's going to be phased into practice. The effective date starts August 10th of 2022, and it rolls through October of 2026. This is important because it's not all happening at once. And the PAC Act has three main functions. The first is to expand the VA healthcare eligibility and the disability benefits to the veterans and their families. Um, the law reforms the VA's presumptive decision-making process and addresses three main types of toxic exposure. Those are the burn pits, Agent Orange, and radiation. It reforms the process for adding and removing presumptive conditions to the VA's list. This includes giving a timeline of 160 days um, to the secretary of the VA to begin to add a condition to the list after receiving a recommendation. This is huge news because before it was so difficult to get conditions added to these lists, um, takes laws. So this allows that process to happen a little more efficiently. It also increases the resources of the VA to bolster the claims processing. The VA's workforce and healthcare facilities um, are getting new people, more help. So that's going to be great. And it helps them take on the added responsibility of caring for more of our veterans who have had that toxic, ooh, excuse me, toxic exposure. Natalie, would you cover who the toxic exposed veterans are for me? Yeah, absolutely. So this is going to include folks who um, participated in Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Freedom Sentinel, Operation Iraqi Freedom, uh, Operation New Dawn, Operation Inherent uh, Resolve, and Resolute Support Mission. Awesome. And now, what does presumptive mean? Um, a presumptive disability for not just for toxic exposure, but for any of these conditions is one that the VA presumes to be service connected. That means there doesn't have to be a specific nexus, which is the link or a connection that a medical professional makes for service connection. Um, when you qualify for a presumptive service connected disability, your claims are much easier to win if you meet the requirements. Um, do you want to talk about the burn pit presumptives real quick? Absolutely. And, and some of those requirements really is just being in right place, right time. Um, and so that's just something to look out for. And you can definitely check out the blog and see if you fall within those, uh, those dates. So burn pit presumptive. So in 2021, Congress created the first list of presumptives uh, disabilities for veterans with burn pit exposure. However, this list only has four conditions, and that's sinusitis, rhinitis, rhinosinusitis, and asthma, and none are related to cancer just yet, right? Um, we can't presume ourselves for what the VA is going to do, but we know that they literally just rolled this out in 2021, so probably more to come. Um, with the Veterans Pact Act, 13 respiratory illnesses and 11 categories of cancers have been added to the list. Okay, so... Um, airborne hazards and burn pit exposures. That's what the, the title of the list is. So these also include chronic bronchitis, uh, chronic OPD, so COPD, um, constrictive bronchiolitis and obliterative uh, bronchiolitis, emphysema, um, and you know pleuritis, pulmonary fibrosis, sarcoidis, sarcoidosis, um, chronic sinusitis, chronic rhinitis, and asthma. Um, and, you know, there's a few others, but again, if you guys wanted to, um, you can take a look at that blog. We can get that posted one more time um, where uh, folks can see what that list is. Some of these words are just a little too much to, <laughs> to try. And hey, I, I didn't study Latin in school, so a lot of them <laughs> I have a really hard time pronouncing. But they did also add 11 categories of cancers to the list. And the, the best part about that is it says things like head cancer of any type, um, reproductive cancer of any type. This is awesome news because before, if you didn't have a very specific diagnosis for a certain kind of cancer, for Agent Orange as an example, it wasn't a presumptive. So 
you could have some type of lymphoma um, that's not on the list and it wouldn't be considered a presumptive. So this opens the doors for any type of cancer for these specific uh, areas of your body. So that's huge for veterans. Um, they've also added some service areas that qualify for the toxic exposure presumption. And again, on the blog, you can find a, a comprehensive list of those. So definitely check that out. Um, it is broken down for the burn pit uh, presumptives into two categories. If you served on or after August 2nd, 1990, it, you know, Bahrain, Iraq, Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, and those countries are on the list. Um, if you served on or after September 11th and you're, you're covered for service in all of the above countries, plus they added Afghanistan, Djibouti, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Yemen, Uzbekistan. Um, there are also the opportunities for the secretary to determine another country relevant. So in order to qualify for that, you've got to prove that you served in one of the eligible listed eligible areas listed, and you have to have evidence of a disability related to the toxic exposure. So a common question that I get is, why can't I be connected just for the exposure? The answer to that is because you don't have a condition that you're being treated for. You have to have a condition that was caused or created by this exposure. The exposure enough is not enough to get service connection. Yeah, and then to, to break that down further, um, when the VA is going to service connect you, they're looking for, in typical stances, uh, three specific things, right? So an in-service event or aggravation, um, they're looking for a current diagnosis, and then they're looking for a nexus. However, when you're going for something like these, which are presumptives, you're you know, your location and time in that location is that service event. And then the only thing that you truly need is to make sure that you have a diagnosis. The nexus is pretty much already written in there as long as you're diagnosed and you have the, you meet the requirements for the location and time. And you have to have proof. You have to show that you were there. So sometimes you got to get a little creative with that evidence. All right, now that we've kind of covered that, the effective dates, as we talked about, are broken down between August of this year to October of 2026. And there are a lot of different um, things that were approved and went into effect immediately. Asthma, respiratory cancer, brain cancer, emphysema, chronic sinusitis, chronic rhinitis, those things were all in effect immediately when this passed. Some things that became effective one October, chronic bronchitis, COPD, um, those are going to be effective. Next year, they're going to add the cancers, um, cancers of any type for head cancer, neck cancer, gastrointestinal, reproductive, and those types. Um, and then 2025, kidney cancer and melanoma is going to be added to the list. So those are that's the timeline you can expect what i don't want to see um you do is get frustrated because you're filing for a cancer um now and it's not effective yet so you can file for those cancers now it's not saying that you can't but it's not effective as a presumptive condition which means you would need a nexus the nexus, again, is a medical professional's opinion that it's at least as likely as not because of your exposure that this condition exists. All right. We've covered a lot of the burn pit presumptives, and now we're going to move on to um, the Agent Orange presumptive service connection. Natalie, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. So one really awesome thing about this PACT Act is that they've opened up um, a few new locations. So five new locations to include Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, uh, Guam, American Samoa, and um, Johnston Atoll during um, the Vietnam are covered for the first time under this, uh, the Agent Orange presumptive policies. All right. So they do have dates, um, and again, we'd want you to check out that blog. They do have dates for when you would have needed to have served for each of these new locations that have been added to the list. 
And, and those effective dates for Agent Orange are effective now as of October 1st, 2022. So if you are a Vietnam veteran exposed to Agent Orange, if you know Vietnam veterans exposed to Agent Orange and they've been struggling, see if they have, you know, the, the will to start fighting again because it's worth it. Um, now, the registries that are out there, the Agent Orange Registry Health Exam is free and a comprehensive exam available um, at your local VA. Now, they'll go through a bunch of tests uh, and then they'll go through it, have you go through it with your VA physician or a VA physician if you're not enrolled in VA healthcare because you don't have to be to qualify. So you can register for that exam um, on the VA website. The burn pit registry, you can also sign up for on the VA website. And there are two parts. There's a questionnaire and then an optional health evaluation. I absolutely recommend conducting the health evaluation. Um, when filing in order to establish a presumptive service connections, again, you have to have evidence showing that you've got a current diagnose, diagnosis. This registry exam is going to help you to do that. So always take advantage of those things. If you were exposed to burn pits, sign up. If you or your family member was exposed to Agent Orange, sign up for that and, and get yourself taken care of. It's really important to stay on top of these things and go through the process as is required. You know, they have rules and regulations that they follow to grant service connection. These are the things that we need to do in order to get service connected for our own personal conditions. So that's all we've got um, as far as the burn pit or not the burn pit, the PAC Act goes. We are open to questions. Um, if you have been listening and you would like to talk to one of us again more to get some more information and see if we can help you through this process, you can go to the link. Um, I have my own personal link. You can sign up directly with me. And so does Coach Natalie. Um, so while we're getting that out there, let's go and cover some questions. What do we have? Oh, I do want to add there are two there are two new presumptives for the Agent Orange as well, which I don't think that we spoke about. So the hypertension or high blood pressure is now pres uh, presumptive, um, effective immediately, as well as uh, monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. If you have that, you would know. <laughs> yep, <laughs> exactly. It's got to be uh, significant if they've got it on the list. That means there are quite a lot of veterans who experience it. Um, Rob, we do have some information on the blog about Camp Lejeune. Um, there, there's a lot going on. I don't know if you've seen all the emails and phone calls from attorney's offices and everything. There's a lot of information out there. Um, that does also cover the Camp Lejeune. So check that out. And I'd say, you know, talking with a lot of my vets, I do know that that is a huge one. The VA has not gotten to where we need them to be yet. Um, as far as uh, I know, speaking specifically to like prostates and things like that with the exposure to the water, um, there's no presumptives for that one just yet. There's presumptives for other conditions, but not that. And so it's really just we sit back and we wait and see what, what happens. Um, it's in the VA's hands at this moment. So Charlie asked, do I still need a nexus? I'm a Vietnam vet army to claim for Agent Orange. So Charlie, one of the misconceptions is that you file a claim for Agent Orange exposure, and that's just not the case. So what you need to do is look and see if your condition that you're diagnosed with is on that presumptive list. If it is, then you don't need a nexus. That presumptive list is the nexus. It is the link that says it's at least as likely as not because of your exposure to Agent Orange that this condition exists. You will need to prove that you were exposed to Agent Orange. So you were in one of those places during those time frames, and then you can get that filed. If you have questions, if you don't know what you need to do, again, reach out, contact us. One of our coaches can help. All right. David says, served in Iraq, but discharged in 1997. Am I still eligible? 
that's a big question to unpack and not always the best forum to do it in, in the open space. So same, David, get on the, get on the line, get with a coach, see if you're eligible. There, there are a lot of factors there. All right. Terrell Walker already on the burn pit registry. How do I file a claim? That's a great question. So there are free resources. You can contact a local VSO. We are available to assist as well. If you would like to join our elite program or our mastery program, the elite mm -hmm. program comes with one-on-one uh, -on -one guidance from a coach. Again, like Natalie said, we have live Zoom classes weekly. Um, there are 14 opportunities to sit in on a live Zoom class every week, and we have tons of resources, uh, YouTube videos, and um, other opportunities to, to hop on with, with coaches and get some information. So check us out, see if, see if we can help. Yeah. And I just want to add, it doesn't cost anything to sign up. Um, you know, we're here to help. Uh, and then, you know, the only time that we as coaches or the company gets paid is if um, we help you win a claim. So if you have any questions about whether or not you should sign up or just trying to get some of those questions answered about if you're eligible, it doesn't hurt to speak with a coach and see because we're going to be very open and honest with you all. And if there's nothing that we can do, then we'll let you know um, and you're not held on the hook for anything. All right. Chris Janice documented asthma since 1992 deployments to desert storm in Somalia submitted a claim 10 years ago and was denied. The condition is chronic. You have done the burn pit registry, um, with the PACT Act clarification. Yes, you can absolutely refile. And I strongly encourage you to do so. Make sure that you have current treatment records and you're getting, uh, you have that diagnosis that still stands and mm -hmm. get, get that filed for sure. Yeah, and that's a good one for, for everyone um, that we, we want to share with you. If you were denied for any of these conditions in the past, you're just going to go ahead and refile it. Um, the VA is actually suggesting that's what's done, uh, refile through a supplemental. At any point in time, if you've been denied, you always have to come with new and relevant evidence. So still showing that you have that concurrent care and that the condition still exists. Um, but, you know, from there, it's just uh, filing within the supplemental. Good stuff. All right. Working on getting you that link, Maria. All right. Was denied for sleep apnea based on the sleep study. Does the PAC Act make it easier to win this claim? In short, Vincent, no. Sleep apnea is not added to the list. There are some um, there are some conditions on the presumptive list that your sleep apnea could be secondarily linked to potentially. That's not a one size fits all option. That is um, a link that has been made and there's scientific research to back it up. So definitely explore that. Um, if you want to explore that with a coach, again, hop on there because, um, you know, I've, I've had a lot of veterans who their sleep apnea is aggravated by their allergic rhinitis that they got connected based on this presumptive criteria. You know, that post-nasal drip, the swelling that doesn't allow the passing of oxygen from your mask, all of those things um, could be part of the equation. Now, again, we're not medical professionals. We're not healthcare providers. Um, but we do see these things a lot. So we can tell you the things that we've seen, the things that we've seen, the medical literature that supports and the things that don't. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we are forthcoming about, about all of those connections. So get with one of us. We'd be happy to help. Yeah. I see Lorraine says that she uh, submitted the PACT Act claim um, and was given a 0%. Um, that's great right? 0% is better than not service connected. So um, you can always appeal it if you feel like that's, you know, an uh, underrated um, condition. And or uh, as time goes on, now that you're already service connected, if your condition gets worse, you can always file for an increase. 
And the 38 CFR is the Code of Federal Regulation that covers what you should be rated for these conditions. Um, Military Disability Made Easy is a great resource that you can use to make it uh, more palatable. Uh, it, it's a little easier to understand than trying to dig through the actual Code of Fed Federal Regulations. Um, and it's searchable. Control F is my best friend. So you can look up these conditions and see what you should be rated based on your symptoms. Um, I definitely recommend doing that before you start requesting increases for things because you might be maxed out. I have 0% for allergic rhinitis, uh, which makes me crazy because my rhinitis really does affect me almost daily. Uh, my nose swells shut. I can't breathe. I sound like an Oompa Loompa. Um, it, it's just really frustrating, but I don't meet the requirements for anything higher than a zero. And that's okay. You know, um, it's connected. They say, okay, this is our fault. We did it. And there are other things. There are other things that we experience. Um, and plus it could be a gateway claim, right? It could <laughs> cause other issues down the road. Medication, maybe, um, again, aggravating sleep apnea, things of that nature. So keep that in mind. Got a lot of questions coming in. Vernon already filed a claim for the high blood pressure and wants to know how long it will take to start receiving benefits. Vernon, if any of us can figure out uh, a timeline from the VA that's accurate 100% of the time, we'd be way rich because it's it's all over the board. It really is. There are thousands and thousands of veterans that are requesting benefits and requesting reviews, and there aren't that many uh, raters. So it takes them some time to go through. They have processes that they have to complete. Um, they have their own timelines within. So it really depends. It is taking less time than it used to. I know when I filed my first one, it was 19, 20 months um, mm -hmm. compared to when I filed my last one and it was three months. So mm -hmm. a lot of factors play into that. If you had 17 conditions on one claim, that's going to take longer than if you only had one or two as well. So those are all factors that play into it. Long story short, it's really hard to say how long it'll take. Do you see one in there, Natalie? Um, John Eli says, I've had hypertension since 1972. Would you be eligible for a disability of high blood pressure? Yep. Um, if you served in Vietnam, uh, it's part of the Agent Orange exposure. So if you've ever put in the claim and you were denied, like I said earlier, you'd want to go ahead and put in the supplemental. But you absolutely would, as long as you have the diagnosis currently, um, you would be able to go ahead and file a claim for that. You do have to prove that you were in Vietnam, but I don't think that'd be a problem with, you know, Purple Heart recipient. Not at all. Let's see what else. Patrick, in Germany, in Fort So, Oklahoma, 86 or 89, pot belly stoves that use coal and diesel, smoke and tents was so thick, put on gas masks. This is not included, Patrick, in the PAC Act, but it is something that I've, I've talked to a lot of veterans about. Um, and you know what's funny? They even still did this back in 2006 because I, had, <laughs> I was out in Nebraska and had a pot belly stove in the tent using coal and diesel. So um, it, it still happens. Well, it did 20 years ago, <laughs> but um, it's not a part of the PAC Act. Now, that's not to say that there's no connection, and that's not to say that you shouldn't pursue medical evidence that supports a condition that you have because of it. But again, you have to have a condition. Hope that answered your question. All right. Alan, Vietnam era veteran. Stationed in Thailand, filed for hypertension in 2010, denied until won an appeal in 2019. Um, can you submit a claim for retroactive benefits? Unfortunately, the PAC Act does not cover retroactive benefits for this. Um, so you could, but I don't think that it would be a great use of your time. 
Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see what else. Sorry, there are a lot of comments to go through. If we didn't get to you and you commented a while ago, feel free to comment again um, so that it's new and fresh on here. All right. Brandy, I think that's how you say it. I hope I didn't butcher your name. What about PTSD? Always referred to as mental hygiene. Um, statement in support of your claim, but not your application. So Brandy, PTSD is not part of the PAC Act. However, there are a lot of resources uh, to help you see if you're eligible for the PTSD. And I like that, mental hygiene. Um, that's a that's a mm -hmm. good phrase and it's totally accurate. Yep. Definitely get on board and see if um, one of our coaches can help you through this because there, there's a lot to unpack there too. So thank you for asking. Check us out. And if, you, if you'd like a female coach, um, Natalie and I are both open. You can sign up with either of us directly so you don't have to go through and see – with the luck of the draw, we've got some amazing coaches, but, um, as a female who's rated for some female things, I much prefer working with other females, women, if you prefer that term, um, you know, that that's just how it is. And same, if you prefer a male coach, absolutely request one. We will make it happen. Absolutely. All right. Uh, it looks like there was a question, Liz, about jet fuel. Jet fuel is not in the PACT Act. Um, this is from Jania. Uh, and then what about Persian Gulf flight deck operations during OIF or OEF? Um, again, if it's during that time frame, um, if you were in the vicinity of those locations, uh, what's listed for the presumptives is perfectly acceptable. But I do know, um, you know, exposure to jet fuel, that's not on the list just yet. Nope. And the PAC Act does specifically say your service doesn't have to be limited to the boots to boots on ground. So if you served in waters nearby or in the airspace is above, you should be covered. Again, you've got to prove it. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Maria asks, what about migraines? Now, Maria, that's an awesome question. It is not part of the presumptive list. However, I know that my rhinitis, my allergic rhinitis, 100% contributes to my migraines. So potentially, again, being a gateway claim could open the doors if it bothers, if those conditions are creating these headaches or triggering these headaches and making them worse, then you could potentially have a secondary claim there with those migraines. Um, there's a one in the a uh, little further up um, from Jerry Kimberlin. Um, if one has diagnosed disability of 60%, our medication copay is still the vet's responsibility. I believe after 50% um, for any condition, just overall service connected, you there should not be any more copays uh, for you to pay. It's after 50%. Good deal. One of the questions from Tanya, reproductive organ cancer. So according to some sites, breast cancer, breast and cervical cancer, as well as prostate and testicular cancers are considered reproductive cancers. Um, I would have to verify that the VA also considers them reproductive cancers uh, because it doesn't specifically say breast cancer. So that's a good question for us to get back to you on to verify. What else do we have? Natalie, did you find one? Um, there's flesh, uh, flex, gosh, my brain. Um, flex, uh, faux show. Um, I have an intent to file with a record of service connection of sinusitis and rhinitis did not serve in theater. Would the PACT Act still be a factor? Um, and you were recalled in 03 to 04 in support of OIF, OEF. Um, little... my, my question, Flex, is were you exposed to burn pits, either air, water, or land? 
that's going to determine whether or not you meet the presumptive criteria. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't meet the presumptive criteria, but you feel that there's a connection, get with a provider to see if you can get a nexus, to see if there is a nexus, which is that link, again, between your military service and the conditions that you experience. Yeah. Can we emphasize that one more time? <laughs> if you, if um, so, again, it, if you don't, if you have the conditions and you don't meet the presumptive requirements of location and time, it does not mean that you cannot get that condition surface connected. Um, a nexus just is needed. The evidence is needed. So strategy, education and medical evidence um, is going to be key. And, you know, it really would help to have a coach that would be able to coach you through that. Um, but it, it does not mean that, hey, I don't meet this presumptive, so I can't get this connected. So let's just drop it. There's still no other ways that we can, you know, you can get that condition connected. Absolutely. And I am looking up an answer for another one of these questions to make sure that I'm answering it correctly. Because this, guys, is a huge comprehensive document and um, <laughs> it takes a lot of research. Now, we are, we are in the know and we do the reading and everything, but it, it's a lot to consume. So there are some things that we are going to want to verify because mm -hmm. just because we think we read it doesn't mean it's 100% accurate um, when we initially say, oh, you know, so trust but verify and we've we've got the resources and always want to make sure that we're giving out the best information that we can so Absolutely. all right chip gilbert Arnado says what info do i need to claim ptsd for combat vietnam vet well i would suggest let's get signed up if you want <laughs> um so we do partner with, uh, with a company um, called Telemedica, and they do uh, psych evaluations, um, which actually the psych eval that you can receive through them meets the criteria that the VA is looking for to get you service connected. So it does the connection, finding that in-service event or aggravation by hearing your story and verifying through your records, gives you the diagnosis that's required, um, you know, whatever the diagnosis may be um, through the conditions that the VA recognizes. And then it also it writes up that nexus statement, which is, a, again, a requirement. So um, again, we want you to go with evidence. Um, so and it also wouldn't hurt that if you are suffering from PTSD, and you know that you have symptoms of that, it wouldn't hurt to get established with a doctor um, and build evidence on that side as well. And you can always sign up for a VA provider. Um for that specifically and any mental health <clears throat> call the VA you can call 988 press 1 as a veteran it is the national suicide hotline but it's the fastest way to to get help especially if you are in crisis especially if you are in in need um urgently all right we've got a couple of others in here um Pretty in pink. May have missed it, but was there anything about exposure to burn pits and asbestos from old ships? That's one of those questions I, I've been kind of scanning through and I don't see anything about asbestos in there. Um, go ahead and check out. Sorry, it looks like I'm freezing up. I hope you guys can see me okay. Uh, but go ahead and check out the blog and um, read up some more information about the PAC Act. Just because I haven't seen it or don't remember it doesn't mean it's not there. Um, but that's the link. You can check that out. All right. Let's see. Pretty in pink also. I need to get signed up. Um, since been diagnosed with a couple of things. Still the constant headaches and getting denied. Definitely get signed up. So what I like to do when I get a new um, veteran is review what they've already got going on and 
sit down and talk with them about what they're experiencing, what they're already connected for. And then mm -hmm. we can come up with the best course of action, the most streamlined course of action so that you guys don't have to struggle and fight and go through quite so many hoops. We try to take the, the difficulty and the frustration out of it. Now, we can't control the VA. Uh, what we can control is how prepared you are. We can control, um, you know, your knowledge and your education regarding your symptoms and conditions and what you've got going on. So and the resources you have access to, absolutely. 100%. All right. Um, Yehudi says, does teledoc um, doctors prescribing medicine for rhinitis or sinusitis conditions okay as proof? Um, typically, if you have been uh, prescribed medicine, they can't prescribe that medicine without a diagnosis. So it, it's proof that you have a diagnosis, but not necessarily proof that you were in a specific location at a specific time, if we're talking about presumptives and bringing things to the PACT Act. But it does, it does help as proof for the diagnosis, yes. Jack Carney asks, um, had an evaluation online referred by your primary, but she kept saying, but what about in the last six weeks? Her assumption was that you not have PTSD because you have brief and frequent issues, but not within the last six weeks. So Jack, I absolutely recommend getting a third party, another opinion, because PTSD is one of those conditions that's on a sliding scale. You have to answer certain questions um, in, in a, a specific way in order to meet the diagnostic criteria for that. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's not there, that it doesn't exist, that you've never had issues. That just means they're focused on treatment and what do you need right now? And because you don't meet the criteria this very moment for the PTSD, that doesn't necessarily mean there's not something going on. So right. I would suggest getting um, a second opinion and talking about what's happened since. It's been a mm -hmm. long time since Vietnam. I'm sure you've had a lot of ups and downs. I'm sure you've got stories to tell for days. You know, that stuff is important and significant too not always to an acute provider that's concerned with PTSD. Yep. So got to find the right, right fit. Yeah. And I'd also add, you know, um, PTSD is a medical, a medical opinion. All diagnoses are right. So let's just not chase the PTSD because there's so many different conditions, mental health conditions that the VA will assess. And it could be anxiety or you know, persistent depressive disorder or panic disorder, um, which is a little less frequent than PTSD, right? So it could just be something else. And if that doctor is focusing strictly on that condition, then yeah, you might have a little bit of a harder time. But I would agree with what Liz is saying. I'd get a third party opinion um, because really diagnoses are opinions in general. Absolutely. And it's okay if it's not PTSD. It really is because the VA will acknowledge multiple other um, mental health conditions. All right. Steven, if I use VA Claims Insider Doctor, can VA require to use their own doctor? So um, VA Claims Insider doesn't have doctors. We do have a partnership with a, a company out that's external and they have contracted providers. Um, so they're not affiliated with us. They're their their own entity. Um, Want to make that very clear. But the VA can't require you to use their own doctors. Medical opinions are medical opinions. Medical evidence is medical evidence. As long as the provider is licensed and um, has all the proper credentialing, then that is a valid medical opinion. Now, if you submit something contrary to what's in your records, then they can say, hey, this, this piece of medical evidence doesn't have any probative value because it contradicts these things in your medical record. Um, so the VA has in the past said, I want you to you know, get an opinion from my doctor as well. 
or for one of, one of our providers, our contracted providers as well. Um, and that's, that's usually the case in the CNP compensation and pension exams. And when, even, even when you submit all of the information that is required by law for the VA to have to establish service connection, they can still request uh, an outside examiner to do a compensation and pension exam. And that does happen. Um, if you're speaking about uh, for a diagnosis, they can't require you to go to a certain di doctor for a diagnosis. One of the things I've noticed about the VA is they really love to treat symptoms without giving you a formal diagnosis. Uh, it happens so frequently. So true. Yep. Um, John Eli says he received 30% for PTSD um, and his symptoms have gotten worse over the years. Should be retested for PTSD. This is for everyone. Um, if you're already service connected for a condition and your symptoms get worse, um, yes. <laughs> you want to you want to be checked out and reassessed, um, whether that's with your doctors, but for the compensation piece and the percentage piece, you'd want to put in another claim for increase um, and have them also look at all the evidence that shows your condition has worsened. Um, absolutely. Dennis um, has some issues due to direct contacting. You have proof at the end of this, the question comes in, how long do you wait for results uh, for higher level review? The HLR is a higher level review. And on average, it takes 125 days for a higher level review. Um, I've seen them taking not quite that amount of time uh, in most cases, but sometimes they go all the way up to or they can exceed that time frame. Again, um, I'd be very wealthy if I could tell you <laughs> exactly what timelines the VA is going to use and if I could predict that accurately um, because it is all over the board. So keep keep checking in with them. Keep uh, following up. You can call the 800 number, 800-827-1000. Follow up on your claim and see if they need anything from you. See if they're waiting for anything that maybe you can provide. Um, I'll always, always follow up, but be kind. Uh, honey, honey always catches more flies than vinegar. So do your best to be nice to those people, even if they're not the most helpful. Yep. Richard, VACI partner Telemedica was extremely instrumental in establishing your claim. And, and Richard is one of, one of my veterans. Hello, Richard. Thanks for coming today and joining us. It's good to see you. And, um, that's one of those things, uh, I was able to, celebrate some some life change with Richard recently. And I, you guys, I can't tell you how awesome that is uh, for him, for us. We, we get touched and are excited to celebrate with you. So thanks for okay. sharing, Richard, and thanks for being here. Good stuff. And I think it's Christianis. Um, you're welcome. We, we appreciate our veteran sisters too. That made my day. You guys are wonderful. We, we only have a few minutes. I know that we've missed some questions in here. Uh, there have been a lot. Thank you guys so much for all your participation and asking such great questions. Thank you for listening and spending your morning or afternoon, depending on where you are with us. We really appreciate your time. And we love that we get to do this. So thanks again. Um, we do have one more quick question in there. How do you sign up for the burn pit uh, registry? We've got the link in there. We'll see if we can get that up again for you. Mm -hmm. And we'll get some other links. Again, if you want some help with this, if you don't want to go this alone, we're here. Um, we've got links so you can sign up and get with us. There's the burn pit registry link. Click there. Um, you can also get uh, on board with us directly, or you can sign up for uh, an elite membership and get one of our other amazing coaches. And there was a question from Leonard about frequency. We do these lives every Wednesday at 11. Um, sometimes if we are 
uh, out. It doesn't happen very often, just a couple times a year. Then we'll do, we'll, we'll rerun a show. Um, but yep, weekly. Look for these weekly. And thank you all. Jack, VACA helped you go from 30 to 40. And you got another one pending. Good luck on that claim, Jack. Yep, I wish Jack. you the best. And listen, again, we can't control the VA. So if you get denied for a claim, keep fighting until the VA gets it right. They win when you quit. Yeah, that was actually a, a topic that we had this morning for Coffee with the Coaches. stick to <laughs> <laughs> It's I okay like to it. be denied. It's never the end, the end of the road. Um, there's always another way to think outside the box or to, you know, appeal um, get new evidence is always another way. So just stick with it. Yep. Always.